This is a binder of photographic paper. They have little pull tabs on the bottom. You can pull out and you can see that there's a bunch of papers stuffed in here. <clears throat> Make sure you keep them upright or like don't turn them upside down. And then they open like this. This is the first page from this binder. The binders are organized by time, so this is a time period from about 1945 to 1950. <clears throat> the binder consists of a number of these pocketed pages, and the samples of photographic paper are in each pocket, so each pocket indicates a catalog number, and there will be multiple samples inside a pocket, but they're all from the same paper, so they're all equivalent. And behind each page of these, um, these samples is information about them. And they're, they're, you know, listed in the position they're supposed to be in. So directly behind this pocket is the information about the papers in that pocket. And we can zoom in a little bit, bring the camera closer. So, for example, in this um, kind of second row in the middle, we have a paper called Dassonville. In the important bit here, there's a lot of interesting information here, but what we really need to focus on is that it says cat number, that's catalog number. So this one is 399, and then after it, it says the size of the the original paper that these samples were cut from, so it's an eight by 10. But this number is crucial, 399. And those numbers, <coughs> catalog numbers, are also written on the backs of the samples. So, let's see, we have, there's three squares in this pocket, and they all say 399. So that's the key, you know, the, Papers can fall out of the pockets fairly easily. If they do, luckily they all have this label, and so you can make sure that they go back in the right pocket, and that's crucial for what we're doing. We can see right away that sometimes there will be empty pockets even when there's information on the sheet behind it. Now, I don't know the reason for that. Maybe there used to be something here and it's not there anymore, or um, <clears throat> we were intending on making these samples and, and putting them in here, but we never did. But that will happen sometimes. So, for example, if you're gonna you know, measure every paper on a single page, um, sometimes what I'll do is, in my spreadsheet, I'll enter these catalog numbers first, but you have to be really careful if you're doing it that way because you have to skip this one, right? Because there will be no papers that have this information and so you have to skip that and you don't, you don't want that to go into your spreadsheet. Um, but again, a good rule is just that um, every paper you're going to measure has its catalog number on the back. So theoretically, you would never even need to use this information. This information is all repeated in the database. The important thing, really the only thing you need to record about these samples is their catalog number because that's how we connect it to all of the other information that we have. Okay, so to begin the process, you want to open Excel first, or at least that's how I do it. So we open Microsoft Excel. Yeah. <clears throat> We're just going to start um, a new workbook. Okay, so now we just have like a blank Excel uh, table workbook. Okay, so here we are at our Excel sheet and what you're gonna want is, let's see. Um, okay, so in this upper left corner, we wanna label this column something like catalog. And then the adjacent columns will be the thickness measurements that we take. Um, we're suggesting that you take three thickness measurements per paper. 
where a paper is the thing that has a catalog number, right? That's what the definition of paper here. So there will be, again, multiple squares in each one of those pockets, but they all have the same catalog number if they're in the same pocket. So it doesn't really matter how you take the measurements. So what I like to do is to do one page of the binder at a time, and I enter all of the catalog numbers at a time. So we can do that here. So we can use this page as a guide. And if we recall, we remember that this spot was empty, so we'll ignore that catalog number. So we have 3150, 401, 16, 399, 1403, and so forth. But let's enter these five. One, two, three, four, five into our spreadsheet. Okay, so we're entering the catalog numbers we're going to use here. 3150, 401. 16, 399, and 1403. Now it's important as you're entering these that they be exactly correct, right? Because here, so if there's a slight mistake in your thickness measurement, that's not that big of a problem, right? You're gonna take multiple measurements and your error is probably, you know, within an acceptable range, right? If you make an error in, in um, putting down the catalog number and copying it from, you know, the binder information, that can completely screw up our data, right? Because now we can't connect it to anything else. And it's very hard to trace those errors, right? You would have to go back to the binder and make sure, right? So the best thing to do is as you're entering them, ensuring that they're exactly correct. And an additional problem too is if, if you get it cor incorrect, it will probably be the correct catalog number for another paper, right? So now our data is screwed up for two different papers, the paper that your error is saying that it is and the paper that it actually is, right? So it's, it's um, these things are really crucial and since you have to enter them manually, there's an opportunity for error here. So just be careful with that. Okay, now let's measure some papers. So first we'll take a look at the instrument we're gonna use. This is a Michutoyu micrometer, all right? And it, the range here from zero to 1.2 inches. We're gonna be using something in the range of like half a millimeter, right? That's where most of the papers fall. Now, this device plugs into a cable that then plugs into your computer via USB. So this is where we plug the cable in. You can see it there. Okay, there's a little, Notch. Let's see if we can get this one focused. Okay, right. And not quite. Okay, there we go. You can see that one side of it is like flatter. Oops, there's the other. Okay. And if we look here, we can see at the top, that's where the flat part goes. Um it won't plug all the way in if, if you don't get that right, so it's not like you could really make a mistake. So once you have it plugged in, then um, on this end, then um, we'll plug in the other end. Just to note, this can fall out as you are working, and what'll happen is you'll go to click the button to send the measurement to the computer and nothing will happen. It's usually because this thing has come out a little bit, so you just stick it back in. Okay, <clears throat> this cable then has this little connector here that has a button on it. And then the other side of it then goes to USB and that goes into the computer. But this is the button you push to send a measurement to the computer. So whatever it reads on here, if you push this button, it'll send that value into your spreadsheet. And that's how the thing works. So let's plug this in. Okay, so the micrometer is now plugged in. Um, to the USB of the laptop over there. So now what we'll do is turn it on. Okay, there we go. Okay, so what to do first is we need to um, calibrate it. We need to set what counts as zero, right? So the way you use this thing is this is a little knob that you twist and you can see as I open, as I twist you know, toward me opening this little crevice here, 
the value goes up, right? So that's how it measures. It's just the relative position of these two things is how it measures thickness, okay? And so we're gonna pinch the paper right there in that little space, and then you know we'll get the reading over here. But what we do to calibrate it is we twist it all the way and then it'll click. We do three clicks, and then if this doesn't say zero, you press and hold this button that says origin, and then it sets that to zero. So tightening to three clicks, we treat as zero. And then when we put a paper in there, and we tighten it, we'll do three clicks again so that we're returning to the what's supposed to be the zero point. And then, you know, the paper will, you know, be interposed between these two things and then we'll get its thickness. So we'll see that in a second. Okay, so let's take our first paper samples. Now you could just take one out of here. I'm, I'm gonna take them all out. Now, there's a question about how you wanna measure these, right? So normally, if you were someone working on a collection at like a museum, well, you would just have to measure the print that you have, right? And there would only be one thing to measure. Here, we have multiple things you could measure. There's four pieces of paper here. Some of these pockets have, you know, 10 and 15 little squares of paper. Some only have two and some only have one, right? So um, it really doesn't matter. I did an extensive experiment where I measured like three squares per pocket and I did multiple measurements on each square so we kind of have a good sense of um, how much variation there is within a pocket so it, it doesn't really matter you could just choose one or you could take a single measurement across three of them but we are asking you to take at least three measurements so in my study I found that the variation in a single square is a little bit less than the variation across all the squares so for you to get like the appropriate range across all the squares, it's probably best to measure three different squares, even if you just take one measurement per. Um, <clears throat> so let's, um, let's show what it's like to do that. Okay. So we have our micrometer set at zero. We'll open it up a little bit. Now, <clears throat> one thing that's tricky here is how you hold it and then stick the paper in. It's a little awkward. I tend to hold it right here because there's like no buttons or anything that I might accidentally push while I'm holding it. And then it gives you this free hand to control the thing. But then you do kind of have to like balance the paper in there before you tighten it, you know, because it'll like, well, if it's loose enough, the paper will just sort of fall out. So you have the paper in there, squeeze it, okay. Click, 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 and then we see that value, okay? And then, so now that's the value, and so for us to send it, we have to push that blue button over there, right? <clears throat> and when we do, it'll send it into the Excel spreadsheet. I'll show you that. Okay, so here we are back at the spreadsheet. <clears throat> now, if you recall, our reading here, let's see if I can get this visible. The reading here was 0.371, okay. And now, if we push this blue button, okay, it said 0.371. Now, this is good because notice, wherever the kind of cursor was here in our spreadsheet, that's where it puts it, so we're gonna delete that. That's not where we want it. We actually want it over here. And so now we push the button, there it goes. Now, one thing to keep in mind, <clears throat> For some reason, when the when you push the button, it enters the value here and then it moves the box downward. But actually, for our next measurement, we want it here. So every time you take a measurement, you're gonna hit the blue button and then it's gonna advance the thing to there and then you're gonna have to kind of move it there. So that's sort of a pain. Okay, so now I'm doing this off screen, but I'm putting another paper in. I did too many clicks, it was four clicks. I mean, it doesn't matter that much, but there we go, three clicks, and I'm hitting the button. Now notice, so I measured one of the other papers in the same pocket, but these values are slightly different. That's okay, there is some variation. In fact, there is variation even within a single square of paper, just because paper is not uniformly thick, or at least, you know, we have a measuring instrument 
that can detect differences. <clears throat> and so um, our measuring instrument is precise to the thousandths of a millimeter. And typically these papers can vary maybe one hundredth of a millimeter, um, even a single square. Um, even one of these little squares can vary as much as a hundredth of a millimeter. So you're going to see that variation pop up in the measurements, but don't worry. If these are like wildly different, then maybe start to worry. Um, and then maybe just like repeat your measurements or something like that. But if you're still getting wildly different measurements, then that's what it is and then that's okay. So we'll take one more measurement on the third paper. Click, click, click. And then we enter that. And see that one was closer to the first measurement, but still a little bit different. And those are our measurements, right? And then we can return these things to the pocket and move on to the next one.